Now here, let's see how I can find mean using assumed mean method. So one of the method through which I can find mean. So when do we use this method? Usually when the values of f, fi or xi are very large, that is when I find the mid value x, xi, then clearly I can find that the mid value of this is 35 by 2, which is 17.5 and 25, 65 by 2, which is 32.5 and 95 by 2, 47.5 and 125 by 2, 62.5 and 155 by 2. And finally, 185 by 2, which is 92.5, is how I get the different values of the mid value. Now, usually this method called the assumed mean method of calculating mean is used when the values of xi and fi are very large. That is, when the class interval has very huge numbers like 1000 to 2000 or 2000 to 3000, then the mid values become very large. And then in that case, we use the assumed mean method because assumed mean method reduces the values as obtained for fi and xi. Now coming to this, let's see how the assumed mean is calculated. The word assumed mean itself shows that we assume one of the value which is called assumed mean. So let's assume one of the value generally for all the xi values which I obtain here, which is the mid value of the class interval we have already discussed this in the previous session. We try to take the middle, which is either this or this. So usually we take the midpoint or the middle value of the entire data, which helps us because each of the middle value is based on the extremes on the left and extremes on the top or extremes on the bottom or left and right. Therefore, for these, I can choose this or this as the assumed mean is how we make it as a rule. There's nothing wrong if we take other values also as the assumed mean, but generally the rule says that we take the middle values assumed as mean. So let me take this value which is 47.5 and lying between each of the values from 17.5 to 92.5 as the assumed mean. Generally my assumed mean is denoted by A, therefore assumed mean A in this case is 47.5 which I have considered for the given problem. Now taking the assumed mean A as 47.5 let me calculate how the next column that is deviation is calculated. So let's see how we calculate the deviation which is denoted by di. The deviation denoted by di is related with the assumed mean as xi minus a. So therefore, my xi minus assumed mean, that is each of the xy subtracted from the assumed mean will give me the deviation dy. As with the formula, di is xi minus a. So let's see how this column is extracted from the formula. Now, as I see, my first xi, which is x1, is 17.5. Therefore, when I substitute and simplify, I get this to be x1 minus a, that is 17.5 minus a, which is 47.5, which on simplification gives me negative 30. Here, you get a negative value, so deviation can be a negative value in this column to make a note. So when I subtract the assumed mean 47.5 from the first observation or the mid value 17.5, I get minus 30. Similarly, proceeding with x2, which is 32.5 minus a, x2 minus a, which gives me 32.5 minus 47.5, gives me 32, 47, 52, and 15. So this is negative 15 is what I get for the second row. Similarly, for x3 equals 47.5, I get 0 because the assumed mean is 47.5 itself. Subtracting this from the same number gives me 0. 
and then next coming to 62.5 minus 47.5 gives me 50 and 12 15 so I get this to be 15 is what I get this subtracted with this similarly 74.5 minus 47.5 gives me 30 and then this 47 50 45 is what we get for each of the values minus 30 minus 15 0 15 30 and 45 is what we get for the deviations di next the next thing i'm going to calculate here is fi di now we come to finding the deviations for each of the observations or the mid values x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 and xx then the next column is to find fi into di where i know my fi from the second column and di from the fourth column which i'm going to multiply where i get two times of minus 30 is minus 60 and three times of minus 15 is minus 45 and then seven times of zero is zero and then six times of 15 90 six times of 30 is 180 and six times of 45 240 and 280 is what I get for each of these curves out here. Now, as I find clearly when I add each of Fi di, I get sigma Fi di. So, my sigma Fi di is nothing but when I add each one of them. So, let's see what I obtain when I add minus 105 plus. plus 380, 380 and 160, 480, 540, 630. So 630 minus 105 is 530 and 525. Therefore, I add up to find sigma fi di, which I get as sigma fi di. When I add each one of them, I get this to be 435. And when I sum up Fi, the frequencies, I get sigma Fi is 30 from the second column and sigma Fi Di is 435 from the fourth column, fifth column. And then I have my deviation using the assumed mean method. My mean using deviation is calculated using sigma Fi di by sigma fi so with the deviation the mean using deviation d bar is given by sigma fi di by sigma fi and therefore this on further simplification gives me 435 divided by 30 with each of the substitutions here which in turn gives me 14.5 but this is not the mean this is only the d bar which we have calculated then how do we find the mean by assumed mean method now the deviation which i have obtained is nothing but using the assumed mean so how do you connect this with mean is the biggest question so let's see how the mean is connected with the d bar x bar and d bar comparison now let's see how i can compare comparing d bar and x bar now as i have found the formula for d bar which is sigma fi di by sigma fi is what i found for the formula of d bar so let's see how x bar can be derived using this so therefore coming to this we know that the deviation di is clearly calculated using xi minus a is what we obtain because di is simply xi minus a a being the assumed mean and xi being the mid value of the class interval or the observation of each of the class interval now when i split this summation i get sigma fi xi minus sigma a times of fi whole by sigma fi is what i get when i split the summation up expanding through the brackets fi xi minus a times fi 
So proceeding further, I find that when I split this, I get sigma fi xi by sigma fi, which I obtain when I split each of the terms, minus the second term reduces to sigma a times fi by sigma fi, is what is modified from the previous statement. Now, as I simplify this further, I obtain as sigma fi xi by sigma fi minus a times sigma fi by sigma fi because a is independent of the index i i can bring a out of the summation this is common in each of the summation terms so therefore this being independent of i comes out and therefore this reduces to a times sigma fi by this thus this gets cancelled and we know that this is nothing but the formula for mean which is x bar because x bar is sigma fi xi by sigma fi. Therefore, I can denote this first term with x bar minus a. Therefore, finally, I have the relation which says d bar is x bar minus a that implies my mean is given by a plus d bar is how I understand the relation between the d bar and x bar. The mean, the exact mean and the mean using the deviation are compared using x bar equals a plus d bar where a is the assumed mean. Now let's see how we can calculate x bar using the assumed mean method for the previous problem which we have discussed. Now we have already identified for the previous example that the assumed mean is considered as 47.5 and then which was the mid value of the column with x i's and then we have calculated the d bar to be 14.5 so with these two values as obtained for the previous problem let's see how we can calculate the mean that is x bar so substituting these two values in this formula i have x bar equals a times plus d bar which is 14.5 that implies my mean is calculated to be 47 plus 14, 57, 62. Therefore, the mean which I obtain using the assumed mean method is 62 for the previous problem with the number of students in the class and number of marks which they got in the subject of mathematics out of 100 is how we calculate. Therefore, this makes us understand that by assumed mean method, my mean equal to 66, 62 implies on average the entire class marks is 62.